In this video, we're gonna be going over snippets in NeoVim. So as always, you can find all of the commands that I run in this video over on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll also leave a link in the description for my NeoVim config over on my GitHub. You can go check that out if you're interested. All right, so the first thing that you'll notice is that this is snippets with COC. Um, COC is Conquer of Completion. So Conquer of Completion is um, essentially the same VS Code um, IntelliSense, but for NeoVim. So if you don't already have that installed, uh, there is a video in this playlist for installing VS Code IntelliSense, and that is installing COC. I also left a link in the blog um, to, to that video. All right, so after installing COC, what you're going to need is, and COC is how we'll actually, you know, um, you know, like uh, have the commands to create the snippets and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to need snippets. So what you'll want to do is plug in Hansa Vim snippets. And so what is Hansa Vim snippets? Hansa Vim snippets, or just Vim snippets from Hansa here, is uh, just a big collection of snippets. And so it has all the ulti snip snippets, and it also has these snippets here. Now these are more general snippets from what I understand, but it, you know I haven't read the documentation too much. I just know that this is just a bunch of snippets that you can use. All right, so if you go inside one of these, what you'll see is you'll see like, okay, a file type dot snippets and the dot snippets is like, you know, the, the extension for all snippets, right? So CS stands for, I guess, C sharp and then CPP is C++, C snippets, all that kind of stuff, right? So if you click on like C snippets, you'll see like, okay, well, if I start typing def or it's called a snippet here, and then if I start typing def, it'll give me all this stuff, and then that's the end of the snippet. And we'll go over how to create snippets later in this video. All right, so now we can get out of that. Um, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is, all right, so now you have COC installed, you've plugged in Hansa Vim snippets, uh, what you're going to want to do next is install COC snippets. So let's um, open up. I can do J and Vim, and we'll open up init.vim. All right. So what you're going to want to do from here is you can press colon and then COC install um, COC. Whoops, COC snippets. All right. So that'll install over there. All right and then we can close that down. Now, after installing that, you pretty much have everything you need to, to do snippets. Um, I did leave this config here, but you're not gonna need this config if you are happy with all of the default behavior. So if you wanna change some of the default behavior, and you know, I stands for insert mode, V stands for visual mode, and all that kind of stuff, right? But if you are you know, not happy with the config that comes out of the box, and I think it's pretty sane and good, but if you wanna change it, you can use this config uh, here. All right, so the next thing that we'll do is we'll open up um, just a you know a file with some code in it. All right, and so this is the post list from my blog. So this is a file that I use over on my blog. So now what we'll do is um, we'll start typing. And if you you already know, like all right, I get um, you know I get. Uh, IntelliSense support, right? So if I start typing import and I tab, okay, I have IntelliSense. So now what distinguishes a snippet from just regular IntelliSense? So what you'll start doing is R, something like RCC, right? It'll be, well, a good way to find out what all of them are is you can do COC list snippets. And you can tab complete this, right? So like I did COC and even, even this, I can press tab, COC list, space, SN, tab, all right. So now these are all the possible snippets for this file type, right? There's a few general ones, like date is general, I'm pretty sure that shows up in all of them, but like here's a couple, right? So RFC and RCC, okay? So you can go through like all of these, there is a ton, there's especially a ton for JavaScript as far as I know. And if there's one in particular that you're looking for, you can start to do something like RCC and then this is a fuzzy search. All right, so let's get out of here. So now let's do RCC. All right, so how do I know that this is a snippet? So just from the completion menu here, you can see that there is a tilde and there's a big capital S. So the little V stands for variable and the big capital S stands for snippet. All right, so we'll press tab. All right, and let's make this a little bit bigger. So now you can see, okay, this is what I'm gonna get from the snippet, right? So I'll press enter 
Okay, and now I have this highlighted. So you might be tempted to just start pressing buttons. And what's going to happen is uh, when you start to do that directly after you do this, you're going to put a bunch of like nonsense in here, right? So just, you know, wait a second after you've created the snippet and look um, for what's highlighted and what is underlined. And I'll show you this one only has one variable, but I'll show you in a second what will happen if there's two variables. So now this one has an underline and it is highlighted. So it's what I'm over. So I'm going to start typing my component. And if you don't know what a component is in React or anything, that does not matter. So you, you don't really need to you don't really need to care. This is just a snippet that works for this. If you're in Python, you'll have all snippets. And if you're in C, you'll have a bunch of snippets that are specific to that language. What you also notice is that as I type this out, this thing changed down here. Now the reason that that happened, I'll show you when we create snippets why that happened. Um, but just note that for now. Okay, so now we don't really want this. We already have a component in here, but we'll also show you another component, um, RFC. So this is a React functional component. The last one was a class-based component. So now we see that we have uh, this preview menu here. So we'll press enter on top of the preview menu. Now before we start typing or anything, let's take a minute to look at what there is to fill out. So we can fill out the component name here because that's highlighted and under, underlined. And then there's also another one over here for props, which is underlined. All right, so let's start typing my component again. So component. And then what we'll do to get to the next one, and you can change some of this behavior with that config I showed you earlier. But what we'll do for now with the default config is control J. All right, so now you might be tempted to think that you are at the end because of like kind of where the cursor is and all that stuff. You might think that you're at the end of props and that you know you have to press A or something like that to get there or press I or whatever. But no, like when you start typing, it's gonna delete this whole thing. This is just a placeholder. So maybe you, if you know anything about React, maybe you wanna come in here and you wanna start destructuring. So I'm just gonna press the open curly brace, okay? And that's just, Anything, I could have put anything in here. Any character that I would have typed would have been the thing that got brought in. And then maybe you want to add some stuff, right? Just add some nonsense. All right, so that's that. And you also notice that this thing updated just like that one did. And remember, make note of that because when we go over our snippets, we're going to see why that happened. All right, so now the next thing that we'll do is we will go see how these things are created. So we're going to do COC again, list. And then we're going to do snippets. Now you can press enter. And now any snippet that you want to see, and we'll fuzzy find RCC. Any snippet that you want to see, press enter on top of. And it'll open up a new um, buffer here with, with uh, that snippet. So here we go. Uh, this is how we create one. So it just says snippet and then RCC, right? So remember that it was called RCC, you probably remember that. This is how you define a snippet, you just put snippet in front of it. And I think this is, I'm not sure, but this may be an ulti snippet, whatever, it's a snippet, right? So now all the things in white are things that are just gonna show up by default, right? Um, these are not variables or anything special, so that's, that's all just there. Now the other thing that's gonna happen is this thing here, this thing with the dollar sign, open curly brace, one colon, blah, blah, blah. Well, remember that it said class name. So this is just the default name that will be there. So if you want a default name to be there, you do colon and then class name. Or it doesn't have to be class name, it could just be whatever you wanna call it. So remember from the uh, functional component, this one said props. And this one says component name. So. Now this is your one. Now any other one that is in here is going to mimic the behavior of the first one that you start typing out. So that's why that was changing. All right. Now this is one with two variables. Uh, so this is the one here, right? And then the same exact thing. And so what will happen is this one, remember it was underlined and this one is the one you'll start with. And this one is also mirrored down there. This one is not mirrored anywhere, so that you'll notice there's no other twos. All right, so that's basically how you'll create one, but where would you create your own? Because this is, if, if you don't know, uh, like if I do something like um, PWD, print working directory down there at the bottom, and I'm also doing this here, this, uh, this um, exclamation point, or bang, to indicate that this is gonna be a bash command. 
All right, so I did that, and where am I? I'm in auto load plug. Okay, well, this is inside Vim snippets. So this is all the Vim snippets that came with, right? I didn't write this one myself. Um, so that's where that brought us. So imagine that you want to um, create some for yourself. All right, so let's talk about that. So adding your own snippets. So what you'll do is, and let's close this file really fast so we can see where we are. This is your base config here, and you, after the COC video, you should know about your COC settings.json. Okay? Now, if we go look for snip, uh, whoops, snip, snippets, yep. So, um, and let me remove that uh, highlighting like that. Uh, so, what you'll notice is that right there, we have snippets.user, snippets directory, and then we pointed to, okay, home.config and vim snips. So how would you even know to get some of this stuff? Well, the documentation is over on uh, the COC snippets repo, but also you can just start to type out snippets, and COC actually knows that you're in its config file, so it knows to start doing things. So these are all like the kind of snippet options that you have, all right? So now we can get out of this. Um, I already created that directory, so if you didn't already create like a snips directory, um, you can do that with this command here. So we're just going to be creating this directory, right, snips, and then we're going to be touching a file inside of it, and mine's going to be called markdown.snippets. Now, this is important because this is the file type that it will be active for. So all of the snippets that are in this file will be active for uh, type markdown. All right, so it doesn't have to be called Markdown, it could be called JavaScript or C or whatever you want to create a snippet for. So you want to put those all in your snips directory and now all of your user-defined snippets will be in there. All right, so let's uh, take a look at one that I have for Markdown. So we'll do uh, snips, Markdown snippets, all right. Now this creates a thing called front matter. So if you don't know what front matter is, it's like an important thing for like blogs and things like that, but essentially it gives me the title for all my blogs, it gives me the date, it gives me all these things. So you'll notice that I have like the date kind of autofill over here, like this is just kind of a command here, and uh, like a bunch of other things. So one, this will auto do it, uh, two, three, four, right? And so this is just like a, like a command right here, and then it's like the bang v is just for like, a, I guess that's for a variable, right? And then I put it in um, these back, like these uh, these weird ticks here. I think they're back ticks or whatever. Um, all right, so let's go see what that looks like. All right, so we're gonna open up. Um, let's do uh, J to NeoVim, and now we can open up some of my blogs. These are just a bunch of markdown files. So we'll do like 14 here. All right. So you'll notice that on top of all of them, I have this front matter. But imagine typing all of this out by hand. Uh, that would suck, right? And I did this for a while, and it did suck. So instead of doing all that, you can do something like this, all right? And you can do M-E-T, whoops, T-A. And you, it already it knows, so if you start to go like this, meta, and we'll open this up, you can see my snippet. It actually fills in the date for you, which is awesome. Because imagine trying to remember the date all the time. That would suck, right? Then you start typing the title or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, the, the other cool thing is, yeah, that it just fills in this date for me. Like, before I would have to, like, you know, go look up here and see what, you know, day it is and all that kind of stuff. And that kind of sucked. So, yeah, that, this is an extremely useful snippet just for me. So I just kind of wanted to go over that you can create all kinds of snippets. Um, so imagine you don't want to just write one from hand or by hand. Imagine you want to um, take some snippet from some code you've already written. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that JavaScript file. And imagine, and I wouldn't want to do this, but imagine I wanted to take all of this that I have highlighted. Imagine I wanted to take all of that and imagine I wanted to convert it to a snippet. So what I would do is in my config, and I'm going to show you the command that you would run um, outside of my config, but in my config what you would do is you press space, you would press um, L, and you would press, and L stands for language server protocol, and then you would press A for selected action, right? So selected just means we've selected the whole thing. So you press capital A, all right, and now we have the option to, the first thing that we have an option to do is convert it to a snippet. So we're going to press 1. All right, now remember, um, it's already putting a bunch of stuff in there. I tried to go down. So now we can name it something like, I don't know, thing, 
right? And it's going to have all this stuff. Another thing that we can do is, I don't know, maybe I want to, you know, have some some variable in here. So what I'll do is I'll put uh, the dollar sign there, and then I'll put one uh, colon, and then, I don't know, uh, var, right? So now that'll be a variable inside there. If I wanted to, this thing, and I'm just putting nonsense in here right now, but um, that will automatically change with this one. And then, you know, you could put two in here. You could put all kinds of things in here. So we'll save that. And, you know, where is this now? Where did it create this? So if we go to back to your NeoVim uh, config, you can look at, uh, you can go into snips. And now we have one for JavaScript.snips. See how it just created that for us? So anytime you're in one, maybe you don't even have a JavaScript.snippets file yet, and I didn't have one, it'll just create it for you and then put the thing in there. All right, so let's see if we can now use that. So now we'll go inside of a JavaScript file, come down here, and what did I even call it? I think I called it thing, right? Well, there it is, right? And there's all the stuff. So now we'll press Enter, and it put me on top of var. Now, one of these things is called var down here, but I don't know where it is. So we'll have to find out. So uh, I'll type thing. A. Well, it didn't pick that up. I don't know. Maybe it did, and maybe I'm just missing it, or maybe I did that wrong. But even still, you can see how you can uh, create a quick snippet. Um, and this kind of was just on the fly. This would not be a very useful snippet at all. Um, all right. So that's pretty much it for creating your own snippets. Um, I went over that uh, basically this tilde character is what distinguishes a snippet from normal completion. Um, snippet edit snippets. I may have went over that, but essentially you can do the COC snippets thing. The other thing, yeah, I wanted to show you was the which, which key command that I used for that. So how did I create that selection and do all that kind of stuff. So let's uh, go check that out. So whoops. Um, Oh, I'm in home. So let me do j and vim, and vim, and dot vim, and we'll go down to which key here, and then we'll search for. Uh, well, I think it's just uh, it's not too far down. So that's s, that's g. This is l for language server protocol, and then for capital A, I have plug uh, code action selected. So that's all I'm doing right there. All right, so. That's pretty much it for that. So we went over um, how to use snippets, how to install snippets, uh, what kind of framework we're gonna be using for all the snippets, I guess, and then uh, some useful commands for those snippets. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I left some links at the bottom of the blog here to the repos, so you can go check out uh, COC snippets. Remember uh, all those commands that were options in COC settings, um, they're all here, so. Yeah, so you can do all kinds of stuff uh, uh, with these. You also don't need ulti snips. You'll notice I never installed ulti snips. It even says, like, do I need ulti snips? No. This extension is designed to work with or without it. I don't think it uses it at all. So uh, you do not need ulti snips for this. Um, the other thing is this Hansa Vim snippets. Uh, this is a place where you can get a ton of snippets. You, all you have to do, and I showed this earlier in the video, but it's just, you know, go inside of one of these directories and check out some snippets. If you want, like, inspiration, you can kind of just look through all of the ones that are already here. Um, yeah, so the last thing that I'll say is that you should make sure to join the Discord server. I know I made a video a little bit back about joining that, but we have a pretty active community over there. We're working on a few projects, so I recommend joining that. Um, also, if you have the means, you can support me over on Patreon, and I would really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.